Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're going to be taking a look today at a topic we haven't looked at in a while, which is getting your film negatives scanned into your computer digitally. And there hasn't really been a very quick way to get all of that stuff done, but I have found something here that is a little faster, but unfortunately uh, doesn't quite get the job done for me. Uh, this is called the Wolverine Titan, and this is a device that allows you to load up a number of different film formats into it and scan them onto an SD card without the need for a computer. The workflow is great. The image quality, not so much. We're going to be taking a look at how this thing works here in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look at the hardware now. This sells for about $160 and you've got a built-in 4.3 inch display so you can see what you're working on. Uh, there's a couple of controls here on the front that I'll show you once we start scanning in some pictures. On the bottom here, you've got a bunch of slots, and what you do on those slots is insert uh, your film into those things with a bunch of included hoppers here. So you can uh, scan in even the 110 photos from your uh, old uh, cheapo camera like I used to have. So you can work with those. You can work with uh, slides. You also can work with some larger formats like uh, 127 or 126 PK. I think I had a camera that shot with this format at some point in my life. So you can use those older negatives as well. And of course, you can use 35 millimeter film, which we'll be experimenting with today. It supports both color and black and white. On the back of the unit here, you've got a couple of ports of note. The first, of course, is the power adapter. This is a uh, USB connector, but it's the uh, larger uh, micro, not the mini, but it does come with the cable and the power adapter in the box. It doesn't use all that much power to work. Uh, you can power it off your computer also if you wish. The SD card is necessary here because this is where it will save all of its images to. Uh, that pops into the back there. It only supports up to a 32 gigabyte card, SDHC only. If you got one of the newer SDXC cards, it will not work on here. So 32 gigabytes is the max. You might have a bunch of older SD cards sitting around that you can use to plug in there. It also connects up with an HDMI television that will disable the onboard display, but it'll give you a, a better image as to what you're looking at on screen. So I'm gonna kick things off with some black and white film that I developed way back in my high school days, I had a photography class that was a lot of fun. And uh, normally I recommend handling film negatives with cotton gloves. Uh, just so you don't risk scratching them. But these negatives are old and scratched, so I think we're going to be okay here. Uh, what you do here is just uh, have the shiny side of the film facing up. The emulsion side is facing down. And we'll get that loaded up in the hopper here. And then you close up the adapter like so. And that will give you the ability to slide the film back and forth as we're scanning here. So you can see how that goes. Now, if you notice dust on the negatives uh, before you put it in, uh, they do sell these little uh, air bottles that you can uh, squeeze to get uh, some air blown out to blow the dust away. That's what I recommend. Definitely don't use the compressed air cans, but those little squeeze bottles are often the way to go. There's one that looks like a little rocket ship. I'll try to find a link to it and uh, put it down in the video description. That's the best way to get dust off of there because the dust will, of course, uh, show up on your final outputs there. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is go over to the device itself now. We're going to uh, select the film types. I'm going to click OK here. And you can see I've got a bunch of different options. We have slides, color negatives, movie positives. It actually supports uh, eight millimeter movies from the old days, but you have to feed them in a frame at a time. So to assemble an entire movie is going to take you forever. I think they make a, a film version of this, which might be a little faster than uh, going frame by frame. But in this case, we're going to go to black and white. I'm going to select my format, which is 135, which is the 35 millimeter format, but you can see the uh, other formats that are supported here. I'm going to click OK, and what will happen here now is the display is going to shine essentially gray here because what it's doing is illuminating its little light box down here. And what I like to do is look at this image first to make sure there's no dust on that surface. They give you a, a little microcloth brush here that you can use to clean off that uh, display before you uh, start scanning, and I recommend definitely doing that. All right, so now that the surface is cleaned off, let's scan some negatives. And this is my favorite part about this device because once I start feeding these negatives through here, 
Uh, it's all coming out in real time, so I don't have to wait for any kind of pre-scanning. I can just get the frame lined up here by maneuvering the negatives around, hit the convert mode button, hit OK. It will then save that to the SD card. Simple as that. Really quick and efficient to uh, work your way through an entire roll of film uh, just by sliding the negatives in and out of the slide holder here. Very simple and really efficient, which has been really fun to work with. Now it shoots a, a 20 megapixel image, and as you'll see in a few minutes, that image doesn't look all that great. Uh, you also, though, have some ability to adjust the exposure and color if you're working with color film. Uh, what's odd, though, is that I would assume that going negative would be underexposing, but this actually overexposes. So if I go down to negative one, for example, uh, the image here, once I get out of this menu, uh, gets brighter. But if I go in the other direction here, it will uh, get darker. So I'm going to cancel that. Uh, go back over to that menu here and then go in the other direction. And this is one of my gripes with this is that you have to go through this menu, make your adjustments, see what it looks like when you come out of it, and then go back in again. So it's not very efficient at uh, getting things adjusted on the device itself, but you might want to do that when you actually get back to your computer. So you can see now that image is a lot darker. So I'm going to uh, cancel that. Oops, I just backed out too far. I'll go back into black and white again, hit OK, go back over here to zero, uh, work my way through, and then the image will uh, get back to a better exposure level there. So you have some basic controls, but I think you're better off uh, using your computer. Let's take a look now and see how color film works on it. Okay, so our color film is loaded up here. I'm going to just insert it into the device now. I'm going to go over to film type, select color negative this time, again 135 for that 35 millimeter film, and look at that. Uh, there is my 93 Ford Probe, all nice and clean. I wonder what happened to that car. Uh, so I'll go ahead here and uh, click on our convert mode button, click save, and again, it's saving it to the SD card, and we can then work on that image on my computer a little later. Again, very quick and very efficient, and you can see your uh, old negatives come to life right on the screen here in real time, and I could not be more happy with this workflow. But let's see what this image looks like when we get it over to the computer. Let's pull this card out and see what some of the problems are with how these images actually come out. So I've got the photos loaded up on my Mac now. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that the Wolverine only shoots in JPEG. You cannot get an uncompressed image. And I think there's a real problem uh, with the compression engine on this device. Maybe it's fixable in firmware, but uh, whatever it is, it's not working all that great right now. So here's that black and white image that we scanned in earlier. Uh, look at all the noise here around the uh, molding of the car and by the door handle. Not very good here. Uh, even though black and white film tends to be grainy, this is more noise than it is grain here, as you can see when we uh, zoom in a little closer on the image. If it could maybe uh, write the file out as a TIFF or something, we might not have that kind of noise, but because we are uh, limited to only having a compressible image, uh, there is some artifacting going on here. Uh, here's the color one that we scanned, and we can go in and zoom in a little bit here and see some more noise around the windshield wipers, for example. And if I uh, scroll over to the left here, you can see here on the reflection that we've got a bunch of noise there as well. Not good, especially uh, when you're trying to do stuff for archival purposes. If you go all the way out here on the image and maybe uh, put it into something about that size for posting on Facebook or something, it might be fun to just have a cheap way to relive memories quickly with some old negatives that you might have. But but if you are being tasked with archiving the family's photos, uh, you might have something good enough for Facebook for now, but if you wanted a good image quality for long-term archiving, you'll probably find yourself doing this all over again uh, when you try to do a print and you see some of these artifacts coming out uh, on the paper when you go to a print house to make up nicer photos. Another thing that I noticed is that it's heavily biased towards green. Uh, it might be uh, part of the issue involving the fact that you're not able to tell it what kind of film you are using because every type of film had different uh, color balances to it. So it looks like it might have just picked something that uh, is default across the board. But the problem is, is that at least in my case, every color photo I put in looked a little too green to me. Uh, so what I've been doing is going into my photo editing software here and just adjusting the tint a little bit away from the green to make it look more like the image should look. So easy to adjust, but the fact is every photo that I was running through here in color was a little more green than I would like it to. In fact, it looked greener than it did on the screen on the Wolverine. And again, you can see all the noise going on here. I also noticed a lot of compression artifacts here too. Now this photo is a bit out of focus. That was one of the problems in uh, shooting uh, film back in the day. You didn't know what your photos were going to look like until they came back from the photo mat or whatever. But uh, here's a shot of my buddy walking back to the dorm room and uh, you can just see how much noise there is in this picture around his face. Even though it's blurry, uh, you shouldn't see all this artifacting here that we're seeing in the image. So really poor compression quality here. 
and not something that I can again recommend for archival purposes. But if you zoom out far enough and again post it to Facebook or Instagram or something, probably fine. So I am very disappointed in this product and it's killing me to say this because I love the workflow on it. In fact, this is probably the most fun I've had scanning negatives since I started scanning negatives. It's so fast. It's really nice to see the images just come to life as they're sliding through. Uh, best scanning workflow ever in my opinion, but the image quality is just subpar. I think it's the JPEG compressor they're using inside of this, and if there was some way to turn off that compression and maybe save a big TIFF file, uh, I would really like to see what uh, this thing is capable of because that might make it usable. And if they could solve the image quality problem, this would be a killer product. It is so easy to use. I could see a lot of people buying these things and having a real blast uh, just going through old photographs, getting them digital and sharing them with friends and family. You could certainly do that with this thing, but the noise and the compression artifacts really uh, only make it good enough for Instagram and Facebook. And even Facebook, when they click on it, you're going to start seeing a lot of noise and uh, uh, garbage in the image that really wasn't there when it was taken. So for long-term archiving, which is part of the goal of something like this, it really falls flat and it barely meets its goal of uh, making it a good Instagram and Facebook sharing mechanism here. So I'm going to have to say skip this one unless they can fix some of the image quality on it. I'm going to be on the lookout though to see what they're working on next because if they can get something with better image quality, even if it costs a little bit more, I'm on it because I would love to have something this quick to scan in the a very large quantity of negatives I have sitting upstairs that I've been meaning to scan now for the last 20 years. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.